So, Amelia, this is Acts chapter 13. And the church that was at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, or Lucius, the Cyrenian, Menaean, a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work I have called them to do, or called them to, rather. Then after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. Being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they came down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. Arriving in Salamis, they proclaimed God's message in the Jewish synagogues. They also had John as their assistant. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came across a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear God's message. But Elimus, the sorcerer, this is the meaning of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, st stared straight at the sorcerer and said, You son of the devil, full of all deceit and all fraud, enemy of all righteousness, won't you ever stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? Now look. The Lord's hand is against you. You are going to be blind and will not see the sun for a time. Suddenly a mist and darkness fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. And the proconsul, seeing what happened, believed and was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga and Pamphylia. Pamphylia. John, however, left them and went back to Jerusalem. They continued their journey from Perga and reached Antioch and Poseidia. On the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After reading of the law and the prophets, after the reading of the law and the prophets, rather, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any message of encouragement for the people, you can speak. And Paul stood up and motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors, exalted the people during their stay in the land of Egypt, and led them out of it with a mighty arm. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. Then after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to them as an inheritance. This all took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until Samuel, the prophet. Then they asked for a king, so God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. After removing him, he raised up David as their king and testified about him. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man loyal to me, who will carry out all my will. Glory, hallelujah. That's in First Samuel chapter 13 and 14. And Psalm 89, verse 20. For this man's descendants, according to the promise, God brought the Savior, Jesus, to Israel before he came to public attention. John had previously proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his life's work, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not the one, but look, someone is coming after me, and I am not worthy to untie the sandals on his feet. Brothers, sons of Abraham's race, and those among you who fear God, the message of this salvation has been sent to us. For the residents of Jerusalem and their rulers, since they did not recognize him or the voices of the prophets, and have read every Sabbath, have fulfilled their words by condemning him. Though they found no grounds for the death penalty, they asked Pilate to have him killed. When they had fulfilled all that they had been all that had been written about him, they took him down from the tree and put him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead, and he appeared for many days to those who came with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witness to the people. And we ourselves proclaim to you the good news of the promises that was made to our ancestors. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, 
as it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I become your father. And that is in Psalm or Psalm 2, verse 7. Since he raised him from the dead, never to return to decay, he is spoken in this way. I will grant you the faithful covenant blessings made to David. That is in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. Therefore, he also says in another passage, you will not allow your Holy One to see decay. And that is in Psalm 16, 10. For David, after serving his own generation and God's plan fell asleep, was buried with his fathers and decayed. But the one God raised up did not decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers, familia, hallelujah, that through this man forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. Hallelujah and amen. Let it be so. And everyone who believes in him is justified from everything that you could not be justified through the law from through the law of Moses. Glory. Hallelujah. That's great news. So beware that what is said in the prophets does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, marvel and vanish away because I am doing a work in your days, a work that you will never believe even if someone were to explain it to you in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5. Actually, yeah, forgive me. <laughs> As they were leaving, the people begged that these matters be presented to them the following Shabbat. Glory, hallelujah. After the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who were speaking with them and persuading them to continue in the grace of God. The following Shabbat, almost the whole town assembled to hear the message of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to oppose what Paul was saying by insulting him. And Paul and Bar Barnabas boldly said it was necessary that God's message be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and consider yourselves unworthy of eternal life, we will now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Glory, hallelujah. It's in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. When the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and glorified the message of the Lord, and all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. So the message of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jews incited the prominent women who worshipped God and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their district. But they shook the dust off their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May we all be empowered to be filled with the Holy Spirit and his joy. And so we too can go out and proclaim the, the best news ever, the good news, the gospel of Messiah Yeshua. In the mighty name of Jesus, may he empower us more and more every day and, get a, and bring us closer to him in our relationship with him more and more every day. In the mighty name I pray. Mighty name I pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you, familiar.